<laughs> and there we go. Three, two, one, and we go. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. I love this comment. Hey, all these countries are making me nostalgic for traveling. <laughs> This is really true. This is really true, actually, you know. Oh, my God. I love to see you all here. Hello. 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 I, I, I can see, you know. Oh, hey, Adam from New York. Very good. Adam, how are you? And we have Anton, looks like from Russia. And then we have somebody from Ukraine. I love it. I can see that, you know, oh, Kirby from Los Angeles. Amit. Hello, Amit. Amit, we know you. How are you doing? and then somebody from mumbai as well very nice very nice hey mark how are you doing and the mark sanchez is here oh my god my favorite la dit he did amazing stuff on the last workshop hey joao from brazil and brian wilcox yes you know this is like a, where else you know than from california with a name like that like sounds like a, you know somebody from you know like a a surfer dude hey oh my god hello everybody my god we have an amazing turnout today i love it so you guys sergey sergey is very is here as well and uh i love it i love it bob hello bob bob kerbin nice to see you reka reka hi ivana was mentioning you you know, we hope we're going to be able to work with you. And then we have a Theo. Oh, my God. Everybody's here. I love it. I love it. So I can see. Oh, Villian. Villian, where, where, where are you? You're back to New York. Oh, good to see you, Villian. Very good to see you. Okay. Fantastic. Guys, um, I cannot thank you like uh, enough for tuning in. You know, I know that, you know, there is lots of stuff going on, especially around 11 o'clock and stuff. And, and many of you have registered and have told me, hey, Dado, I'm not going to be able to attend live. But, you know, we are going to keep this recording. I think it's an important part of the development. Um, subtractive color system is indeed a great new tool um, and I'm sure you're going to love it. And I'm so happy that I actually have come on, on, at the end of this project and that we are about to release it. You know, it's been a long journey, so maybe I'll start um, with that. Um, so, uh, where, wait, wait, somebody said I have an echo problem, right? Is there an echo? How is it now? Is it better now? Is there no echo now? And Robert from Zagreb. Very good. Very good. I have no, I'm not sure I have a, like a, probably like a, you know, some setting here I need to do. No echo. Perfect. Yeah. Very good. It was one button. It's called use echo cancellation that creates even more echo. <laughs> so, very good. Very good. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Okay, let me start um, with a uh, little bit what, what was happening. I want to tell you, the, first of all, that, you know, I have been working on this whole subtractive, you know, color system for years. You know, this has been like such a, um, you know, a long journey for me because it was really Vittorio Storaro who kind of, you know, made me aware of it many years ago. I had the pleasure of working with him. And in one of those conversations, he said, um, you know, that, that the difference between how film captures the light and how digital captures the light. Um, Vittorio was then really working with the very first um, F65, which is like a, a basically Sony's, you know, really like a flagship digital camera. And, um, and, and, you know, it was very interesting to hear that. I never really realized it. And then later, I, I, I was uh, hired by a British Film Institute, by the National Film Archive. And uh, I was actually going there to train um, people who work at the archive, um, you know, to operate digital color grading systems. Um, but, you know, I use it opportunity to pick their brains about, you know, all things film. And, and it's actually, you know, really a kind of, you know, infectious when you meet people who love film. And then basically it's such a like a, um, a, a you know, a thing with, um, uh, um, 
they, they, they really have so much knowledge and passion about it. And, you know, when you meet somebody, you know, who does it, you know, it just really becomes very infectious, infectious and you really want to learn more and more. And this is really where I learned about all the different history of, of, you know, kind of how this whole subtractive color systems came together. I think it's very interesting for you to, to, to hear about it because I think it's, it's one of those things that we should do it. So, um, uh, basically, uh, in uh, 1912, Arturo Hernandez uh, has uh, basically uh, patented the very first subtractive color uh, system, like a film that was do doing that. And that patent later was acquired by Technicolor. And, um, and Technicolor, when they were making their first color films, um, you know, they were first using subtractive, then they went to like an additive, and then they were came back to subtractive model, uh, realizing that it's actually probably going to be working better. And once they acquired this patent, they have been kind of releasing new and new versions of film that was at that time very complicated because you had to have a prism and so on and so on. In any case, um, when Kodak came on, 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 on in play, like around 30s and then all the way until 50s, you know, Kodak was improving their film stock and really it was in 1950 that they released this um, negative safety film 5247. And this is like a, probably the first negative that we know today, that we use today, um, you know, which has a, like a single kind of layer and this uh, layer is, is just, you know, perfect way of how to capture color in subtractive. I just saw that Simon Walker has entered the room. Hello, Simon, good to see you here. <laughs> and Sonia is here. Hello, Sonia. Very nice to see you. Sorry, I just have to say hi to a few guys I know. You know, it's just nice to see you all. And Amit, again, very good, excellent. All right, so basically, let me just explain you really what is the major difference. Um, so the difference is this. In order to actually capture color, what subtractive system does is actually takes um, a, a, like a filters and reduces particular color from the full spectrum. So basically what happens is such, and this is why it's called subtractive, because it's actually uh, removing particular frequencies of light. Okay, so what happens is, is you can see now, like a basically in this, in this, in this diagram, um, when we are on full, like when we have all magenta, yellow, and cyan on maximum, we then have a black. Okay, so it's kind of this is why it works in a completely opposite way than how uh, our RGB system, our because that's what we really only use today, and how everything is working today, where colors are added. So if I actually want to kind of create the color, I have to you know generate you know a light source of primary color like red and mix that with the other colors. So what happens when I have a, you know all the all those colors on maximum, then I get a white. You know, and that is basically the major difference. So you see, like you know, subtractive really removes frequencies of the light, and um, you know, additive really adds. Now I have to um, be really honest with you guys that that you know I I have you know discovered then the way of how to emulate this particular process, and I really love the look. Um, but I, I never quite um, actually understood exactly, you know, like uh, how things were working uh, until I didn't speak to uh, Josh Pines yesterday. And um, uh, what was very interesting is that, um, you know, he showed me uh, like a free slides and that completely kind of, you know, came, oh my God, I really understood what's happening. And, and, and I think this is the kind of, what great color scientists can do is they just can, can get something very, very complicated, you know, very simple. And this is one of the things that Josh does incredibly well, um, where he just kind of explained to me one thing that I was for years, you know, kind of trying to understand. And then, you know, I saw three slides and it, boom, totally like was, ah, now I understand what's happening. Now, I won't necessarily spoil um, this for, for, for Josh, because actually what, what we decided to do is we have invited Josh to be our guest lecturer um, on our uh, Summer Look Academy that's starting next week, and he's gonna come and deliver um, his lecture. 
and um, and that is basically I'm going to leave it to him to explain to you like uh, these kind of secrets about subtractive color and many and uh, many other incredible things you know that I think you know it's just going to be amazing I'm actually already excited about it now just thinking about it um, so uh, um, basically um, Josh is coming I'm pretty sure maybe second week and then or third week we'll see and then also I want to announce what I'm already talking about the Summer Look Academy I want to let you know that we are also gonna have a guest lecture from Lawrence Scheer um, and you probably guys know Lawrence is a very 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 good DP but one thing I really like about him is the way how he's very successful in emulating uh, a film look on digital cameras because you know one thing that Joker did incredibly well is making us all believe that this was all actually done on film. Um, but let's go now and move into a little demo. Let me um, basically um, explain to you um, what uh, is really happening like and how we're gonna do this. So I have to kind of you know just first of all you know I have to tell you a spoiler you know DaVinci Resolve out of the box can't do uh, you know CMY you have to basically use special software so for you guys who don't like to use plugins this is not a webinar for you but uh, for you guys who actually want to expand your toolbox you know please stay here you're going to see something really amazing happening um, so what I got here is just a shot um, you know with Ari Alexa and um, and what I have here is I just applied like a standard lookup table, you know that you know you download from Ari's website. You probably know that I don't use the one that comes with DaVinci. I, I use the newer version. And um, now I want to just have this shot as a reference, and then I want to basically show you then you know what is happening. So oops, you know that's not really what I wanted to do. Let me see. Just gonna cancel this and go back here. And so now I am in DaVinci, and I'm gonna go and say next. And then here you have probably seen I have uh, plugins open and there is a plugin called Look Designer 2.0. So finally, you know, I have been talking about it that we're working on it. Um, so basically it's ready and it's going to go into public beta next week. So um, I dropped the plugin on. Um, first thing I need to do is I need to say, okay, what's the camera input? So I'm gonna go and select here, uh, uh, Ari Log C. And then also I have to tell it, hey, um, don't be like a, a HDR, uh, please can you just show me this in Rec 709. And you're probably noticing that, you know, the new version of plugin supports ACES and HDR all in one, so they won't be separate plugins. It's all gonna come into one plugin now. So now what I got here is a, is a pretty actually neat looking, uh, you know, result, you know, so basically it's just a slightly different color science for, you know, like a um, 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 Aris Rec 709 color space. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here at the top and you can see basically this combo and, and you know, this is really designed to emulate to what is really happening when you like a capture image on film and when you then process that image. So, so here we have first printer lights and they're like, a, you know, the classic printer lights that we used to use when we used to develop film, you know, so they are basically just, you know, increasing that. And then here we have a subtractive color element, which is the one um, I was talking about. And, and, and basically the way how this subtractive element works is like this. So, so this is changing the density of your um, you know, kind of, you know, uh, uh, like a like a layer because, you know, film has got three layers, right? One's kind of, you know, capturing only cyan, another one magenta, another one yellow. And by changing these dials, what you're doing is you're basically emulating um, the density of that particular kind of, you know, layer. So what see now is if I basically reduce it, I'm actually, you know, increasing the level of that particular color and if I increase it I actually am reducing the you know level of that color but there is something very interesting happening in the background because what I'm doing is by increasing the density right I'm also increasing what you're going to see as saturation so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and increase gradually all three uh, density of all three layers so cyan, magenta, and yellow. So you see, so what I did now is I have kind of kept bouncing image and I really love this. 
especially look you know when I'm changing like a, just a yellow one like you know you see how I can perfectly control the skin tones look at that you know and this is just me working just with these three dials that's all and look at the quality and the warmth and the beauty of that skin I'm gonna go a little bit further let's see what's gonna happen so I'm gonna go and increase you know density further look with the cyan I get these gorgeous like you know greenish looks but it's not like a normal cyan guys that you know can do like when you combine printer lights this is really different and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens so look now I have basically kind of increased all three of them and my image has now come down okay because that's what happens in subtractive that the denser the filters the kind of you know more light we are filtering through so the overall level goes down but let me show you this if we look now into our vectroscope look at the amount of saturation here and by the way what I can also show you this is this in um, um, in my in my vectroscope you know I I, basically let me just show you so if I go now and, and, and look at my rec 709 only check out the amount of saturation and look at my now CMY it just expands and this saturation is very interestingly um, present in the shadow and this is complete opposite to what happens with RGB in RGB we have a very little saturation in the shadow because we have a very low level of light and low level of light does not allow very high you know saturation values to happen but in subtractive color science works opposite the higher the level of light or the higher the density right the darker the image and the more saturated it is so it, it's and that little subtle difference makes a huge huge change for us so I'm just gonna go and tweak this a little bit more just to get the skin tone to look the way I like it so what I do then is I go to my printer lights and I compensate you know for the exposure change so I'm just going to go do this a little bit maybe I want to tweak my yellow channel a little bit because I, I like this kind of you know warmer skin tone like this and then with the printer lights I'll just compensate a little bit and check this out this is no film stock emulation applied to it this is no LUTs this is absolutely no LUTs this is just basically me increasing the density of cyan, magenta and yellow and basically you know getting this image so let me just compare it to you this is basically how it looks like with the rec 709 and check this out this is with the increased density of CMY and what a beautiful and a subtle but very very filmic you know like aesthetically just a beautiful looking results and um, and that is really like you know a, a, a major kind of breakthrough really this is just you know so difficult to explain you know like if I, I was trying to recreate this using saturation curves and this and that but it doesn't work it doesn't work because you know you you really need the math you know for subtractive to get this effect to work really well I can then continue refining this image you know I have like a lots of other controls here I'll, I'm not gonna go into all the amazing features that you know um, uh, this particular version of plugins got you know maybe we'll cover it a little bit later but I just you know you know want to say look just by using these little controls how you know kind of it's almost like a creating a custom film stock right so um, now what I want to do show you is basically look let me show you like another shot because you know this is like a very high contrast situation you know so um, I want to show you what it would that look like on a high contrast so I'm just gonna go and uh, apply the same look now into this one and let's have a look so check it out and now I can basically go into my first node and just with a little CDL I can correct you know my my, my basically my look and check it out this is just you know it gives you like a, this kind of yeah, I would I would say call this um, Christopher Nolan feel you know it does kind of feel very filmic but let me actually before I get excited about it too much I'm going to show you a few more things um, this is also another scene I like because it's a night scene and you know like a, because you know I told you that saturation is very much in the shadows so I always wanted to kind of show you hey how um, does you know you know is gonna perform on a low light so let me go and show you that so I'm gonna go and copy you know the same you know setting now for this one and then bang you know I have of course you know just closed it down but let me just open my gamma and check this out 
Have a look. Have a look the depth of this color in the shadow. Have a look, and, and that, and it's not like a distorted color. It's not like, you know, I oversaturated. Actually, this feels like, you know, really pleasant. At least like, you know, I'm, I'm watching this on my, you know, HDR, you know, all its screen, and these colors just look so beautiful and rich in, on, on HDR. I can't tell you like, you know, this is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. I can see just a few questions in the chat. I want to just cover that a little bit. So the, somebody asked, what's the upgrade cost? There is no upgrade cost. If you have a color lab, this is going to be free for you. There's absolutely, you know, no additional cost to that. This is why it's a subscription model so that you always get free upgrades. And when it's going to come out to general public, it's coming out on uh, uh, beginning of September. And then for everybody who's on the uh, Summer Look Academy course, it's coming out tomorrow or Monday, basically. So we're gonna, you know, uh, you know, we're gonna use the opportunity, you know, that we, you know, creating with the Summer Look Academy to help you guys, you know, like uh, even, you know, shape the final parts of this plugin. It's, it took a long time to develop, but you know, there is many, many different moving parts and I really, really love it, you know, to, to, to kind of, you know, get you know software in the hands of creative you know colorists and see what they can do with it and, and you know how we can further refine it and make it even better um, so uh, another question was from Ali is it is it the transform safe so look there is no LATS here so this is just a mathematics so you know there is absolutely nothing really to break there is no gamut errors or anything like that you get the same result in the ACES, you get it everywhere because you know there is no minimum and maximum or anything like that. You know, this is all just basically not gonna work. Now, um, somebody says with the regular LATS still available, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, the version one LATS are, are going to be available, but Arthur, um, I have removed some and I have improved some other ones. You know, so if you have some that are in particular important to you, please email me and let me know, hey Dado, can you please make sure that they are staying here because we have expanded um, and basically that. Now, Adam said, how does this compare to HSV and HSL? Well, Adam is a completely different. It's nothing to do with that. You know, HSV and HSL are, 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 are again additive. You know, they are not really using this kind of subtractive method. So you don't really get that effect, you know, that we can create here. It's actually completely different. Um, now, you don't have to worry about illegal gamuts because we are still far, you know, away from anything that's going illegal. You know, what happens with illegal gamuts is when you are, something is too bright and too saturated and this is not the problem here. What we have a situation here is that we have a low light and high saturation, so nothing ever actually will go out of gamut. Uh, now, uh, Sven, there is no other way how to control the plugin apart from keyboard and mouse. And the problem and the reason for that is nothing to do with me, Sven. It's just that DaVinci does not allow us yet to assign any controllers. Um, but, you know, knowing Peter Chamberlain, you know, this is also going to happen. We did ask for it, you know, and Peter, you know, is, is usually really, very really responsive to our requests. He's one of the, those companies that are really listening to their users. Um, so I do hope that, you know, we're going to get an ability to get custom um, controllers on the DaVinci panel assigned to the panel. Um, so let's go. I want to show you like a couple of other things that, you know, that plugin can do when we're already here. Um, uh, okay, sorry, there was a question from Luca. Red Helium, yes, it looks actually amazing. And you know what? We tested it also on a Komodo and it's just unbelievable what this little trick does it to the Komodo. Um, now, I'm not sure, you know, that the C CYM uh, controller in Baselight, I'm not sure exactly how that works. Um, but but basically, um, uh, oh, there's somebody said, can we do the gang? That's a good, it's actually a very good idea, Adam. You know, I think I'm going to actually write this one down and then I'm going to talk to my developers. I think we should be able to squeeze that one in, not probably for this beta that's coming out next week, but I'm, I'm, I think it's, you're right, it's a good idea to actually do that for the final release, to have a gang value. Let me just write it down. You see, this is why I love this kind of, you know, meetups because, you know, you guys give me such a great ideas. Um, I want to take it like a little bit further. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, is it 
I don't look you know I really don't know how to how to measure this you know I'm not sure you know this is something I might need to speak to somebody who knows better than I do how what would be the, the scale of measurement at the moment is, a, is a just a factor is a kind of you know co coefficient um, and then you know we'll, we can decide you know how best to do this um, it works in all color spaces by the way so look you know I can just go and and and, sh and show the same one um, in in like a uh, Netflix version of HDR, which is then P3D65, you know, and you see, bang, I'm straight away P3D65 in PQ1000. Um, I can also, um, you know, also, oh, this is a very interesting feature. What we have a new option in ColorLab is now called Scene Referred. So what this does, it actually outputs it back into the log C, and then now you can continue working in your timeline in a color managed fashion so that you basically have you know just you know everything working in log c and then you can then apply another node that usually would come at the end maybe on timeline or something like that where you can apply a 3d lat that would go from seven uh, from ari to 709 so you see i can actually like you know use the cmy and remain in a scene referred so actually we're trying to do so that you know the the the, the, the new look designer goes all the way to the beginning of processing node tree so that you apply all the settings but you remain in in in, in scene referred space so that you know your timeline remains in scene referred space and then only at the end you can use you know DaVinci column management or lookup table or, or, or ACES even you know to column manage and, and this is just going to be applied as if it's happening on the camera negative so you are basically modifying only the camera negative and you're remaining in that original camera negative space so this is also an, a very very nice option uh, let me go back I wanted to show you a couple of things because this is just going to like take this also further to the next level so that you see what we got. So um, um, I can also tweak a little bit the temperature. And by the way, this is proper temperature. So what it means, it's like a, you know, perceptually accurate temperature. So you see like, how beautifully it works. You know, I can just, you know, maybe warm up the shot a little bit. And I'm so happy for that because I do like this color temperature here in DaVinci. But, you know, it's not as neat. I mean, DaVinci has a great plugin, you know, which is called uh, Chromatic Adaptation that does the same effect. But in the plugin, I can't really tweak in between. I only have a jumps of 5000 Kelvin. Um, we're about here, you know, this is actually a Kelvin value. So this is really 100% the Kelvin value that I can change and 100% align into the system like that. Now, somebody said, Julie says, can I create a, a lot out of this? Of course you can, Julie. And here is the news. The 2.0 look designer allows you to create lattice 33 point and now also 65 point. You have basically, you know, have uh, asked for it. And now we said, okay, let's go a step higher. So now you can basically do that. Um, uh, Piankil, I think you can't really get this plugin at the moment. As I said, it's going to be available in September. It is only going to be live, you know, for the uh, attendees of Summer Look Academy um, who are going to be, you know, developing, you know, for four weeks looks with this and, you know, also, you know, be the, basically the first public beta testers of the plugin. Um, now, Basically, if you want to now adjust all the other adjustment, Adam, um, and you want to put that all into one LUT, you have to replace our plugin with a LUT that you just exported. And then you have to go and click on this particular node here. And then you say generate LUT. And this is going to then combine everything, the plugin and basically, you know, everything into, into one. Uh, the difference between 33 and 65 lat is just the size of it and precision. Um, basically, a 33 point lat is, uh, is, is a standard lat that we're using all the time. It can be loaded in a camera, it can be like loaded in a lookup table boxes, it, and, and it's what we've been using. Most of the lats you find out there are 33. But you know, we have now um, went, you know, because the processing power computer got a little bit better, we can now go into the higher, you know, resolution of LUTs and that is um, basically happening. 
um, so that we added you know more points but the amount of points really increases precision in the shadow area which is really where we were usually struggling with LUTs which is very important when we start working in HDR and DaVinci is really running very well when those 65 point LUTs and you know usually all visual effects companies want that but you know precision as well so you know for that uh, type of workflow we have fulfilled that as well uh yeah, and uh, uh okay villain had got just a great tip for you guys to what you can do um there is a, like a little like a, a a film on the on on color um yes jan it is ofx uh uh and and it will never work in base light i'm afraid um because it is very specific all effects made for davinci resolve so this is going to remain only the DaVinci Resolve plugin. And the reason why is because the original OFX standard has got a very little ability to accelerate things on the GPU. This is super complicated mathematics and we can't really run this on a CPU or, or, or what they use originally was something called OpenGL and this is not supported anymore, you know, like, or, or very little support. This is metal too, like a hard-coded plugin that is just really working on my MacBook in real time, no problem at all. And this is the only application on the market that can allow us to do so is DaVinci Resolve. So we won't ever port it to anything else. Um, now, basically, Adrian said, hey, I often find myself grading a 709 footage. Can I also use it on that? Of course you can, Adrian. What you do is here you go to input, you click on this, and then you select 709. And that basically is going to allow you to work with kind of, you know, um, um, you know, footage that is already in 709 space. Yes, Arthur, it will work on CUDA. Uh, probably uh, beginning of next week, we're not going to have it, but by the end of the next week, the CUDA is going to be ready. Um, and then uh, I would love Rakesh for this to work in Scratch and Mystica, but again, if they allow us to use, you know, the proper GPU acceleration that we normally use, we would do it, you know, but indefinitely, like, you know, at the moment, they don't allow this, so we really can't do it, okay? Um, so, uh, uh, now, Tom asks, what's the better S-Look 2 or S-Look 3? S-Look 3 is better. We support that at the moment, but I will add, you know, those S-Look 2 profiles as well. And then, um, um, and stuff like that. So, um, I, I, I can now, like, uh, I haven't got Sven any test images loaded in my computer now, but we can definitely, you know, test it, um, you know, through our workshop, you know, through our, uh, you know, Summer Look Academy, we'll have enough time to test it completely. I want to show you a couple of more things that you just see what's happening here as well. Um, here we also have a, a, like a, a, a an ability still, like you know, the uh, plugin originally had the ability to control, um, you know, contrast and color separately. This has remained. So now what I can do is I can just press like an S1 here for a contrast and then, but I, now I can tweak my contrast. You see, I have ability to actually change it a little bit like that. Um, then another thing that we can do is we can also like, um, you know, have now ability to blend profiles. Um, so I can just go and do negative. Okay. And then when I do negative, I can select what uh, film negative I want. So basically we, can, we are really recreating the whole film lab scenario. So here I have options of different ACFAs, but maybe I'm just going to go and say, like, give me some ectochrome. So check this out now. This is basically how this image would look like if we had captured it on ectochrome negative. And you know, that particular, you know, stock hasn't been available for a very, very, very long time. Check this out. Check this out. And this is the your X709. The Rex 709 and check this out and look at that beauty in the skin and you know the deep saturation in the skin that comes from the CMY and then you know the film emulation just really wraps it into this kind of you know space but what's really pot n necessary to do is it's necessary to change the signal of the digital camera first in order for this LUT to be able to produce this image because the LUT can only emulate you know to what the output is so you need to change the input by applying the CMY in order for this kind of emulation to really, you know, start working properly. Um, but we can take it even further because now we can say, okay, this is my negative, right? But I also want to print it, okay? So I want to print it onto, let's say, 
Um, now I have several versions of 2398 because you know like this is a stock that's been around for a long time and you really have to like uh, you know go and, and ask yourself hey you know like uh, who's measured it so I have a, like a classic version this average by the way I think it's the most accurate because I know people who have actually done it and they have measured many many film stocks and then created an average value I have a modern 2390 one that kind of came out just you know like a you know, few months ago and then I have an old school one as well that was done like, a, you know, probably the first, you know, 2390. But I'm going to use the average because I really liked it. And then again, I can just decide how much of that print stock I want in it. And then basically, this is now how it looks like. Let's check this out. Look at that image, right? So this is basically, uh, uh, you know, CMY. Then after CMY, you know, we have applied then, you know, ectachrome negative profile and then we have printed it to 2398 Kodak stock and we used it just an average. And check this out. And now if you're happy with it, I mean, I love it. I mean, the skin tones are just amazing. This is Christopher Nolan. You know, this is the basically the look. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. We're still far from making things really look like film. This is not like a, ever going to make a digital camera look like film. So just so you guys understand, even though it looks very realistic, you know, the more we learn about film, the more we understand, you know, how many little moving parts there are that are important, you know, that we as humans subliminally notice. Um, and, and, and so the digital is never actually going to be 100% like film. It's not, it, if you want to really have a film look, you have to shoot on film. But it's going to help you get it aesthetic you know, with that. Now, somebody asked, hey, what about grain? And it's Omri. Omri, you know, very good question. So I want to show you this Omri. So here we have a grain lab. Um, I won't go too much deep into it. It's a brand new plugin. Also one we've been working for a very long time. And you're going to also be able to test this plugin. Um, during the, the, the Summer Look Academy, um, I, I, I actually want to show you this. I want to keep some things a little bit under wraps, but it's, you know, incredibly, you know, uh, accurate grain that we have developed using machine learning processing. Um, and it's uh, basically parametric and it is um, also, it, 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 it works like a, um, it's a generative. So that means the grain is not, you know, just overlaid, but it's generated based on the image content, which is a big, big difference, right? So it, we generate grain based to what's inside the image. And that's amazing difference to when you, when you see that, you know, you're going to realize how nicely it blends then. And also, it doesn't really analyze only a single frame. It works over a span of eight frames um, in order to be able to get this kind of generative process working. We need to analyze a flow like of frames. Um, so it's also very unique about grain. I don't think we had that in the past. Um, so so um, that is going to be basically the, the news. And then Sven asked me, hey, Dado, can you actually put the grayscale from there? I can, you know, so I'm just going to go and put this grayscale here. And then I'm going to put a new compound clip. So now I, ha I can apply a grayscale and I'm just going to go and apply like a CMY so that you can see really what's happening with it. And let's see. And as you can see, you know, nothing, you know, it has increased saturation like a here. You see like in the shadow, it's very hard to see on a grayscale image, but you see how it's actually saturated in the shadow where highlights not really saturated. And then uh, in a waveform, you see, you just get this kind of gorgeous fall off. With, it's not like a lot that kind of breaks image. It has a very clean curves, you know, which is why we kind of try to stay away sometimes from the lats. We try to, you know, maintain the original response um, that, you know, we want to get from the camera. You know, we want to we try to keep the signal as clean as p possible. And yes, it is going to work in ACES as well. It's already working in ACES. What you want to do is you just want to go here and you say, okay, I'm an ACES CCT input, right? And then on the output, you have to say, I'm an ACES CCT output. Maybe I can show this very quickly for you now if you want. Um, so I'm just going to go and get my ACES plugin. ACES transform. So this ACES transform is going to go from Alexa into ACCCT. 
right? And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another serial node and I'll copy this plugin. But here I'm going to say, hey, you want to go from ACCCT into Rec 709. There we go. And now I just have to tell my plugin here to be, hey, actually you are working in ACCCT on input and you're going to be working on ACCCT on output and bang, you have basically exactly the same result, you know, working in ACES as well. And then you can export this as a lookup table and that, that becomes an LMT for ACES CCT. So all the film stock emulation that I showed you and everything you've seen, you know, it's just perfectly working in ACES as well. So uh, basically, uh, in, you have to have a um, Colorlabs uh, look designer version 2 if you want to do all of this inside the ACES. Otherwise, there is like, but you know what? Don't buy this now. We have a, like a version 1 ACES, but you don't really need it. It's just a few weeks and this plugin is going to be out. So I'm happy now, you know, to continue like uh, answering uh, your questions, guys. So please let me know like uh, in a chat to what's happening. Um, and then, you know, we'll take it up from there. Uh, let me go. I want to just also like uh, use this opportunity to kind of, you know, let you know that the registrations for summer look, and you know, this is a, you know, blatant plugin, but guys, I'm really, really excited about this program we created. You know, it is, it, we, and actually go to the website now if you haven't been because we updated it and, and, and we have a full program now. You're going to see what will be happening, what modules we have. And, um, and, and I really think it's a great opportunity for any one of you who's interested in getting to, you know, learn new, new tools and, you know, develop new looks and, 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 you know, to go through this kind of Summer Look Academy. The end assignment for you is going to be to, to you know, we're going to give you a script and you're going to get that script and going to take some test shots and you're going to create a show lot. And this is really the most important job or most even most creative job that you as a colorist can do. This is how you forge relationships with cinematographers and directors. If you become their extended arm, if you understand their vision, what they're trying to do, and you translate it into look. And this is the end goal of this program. You know, I, I just don't want you to be just a colorist who know how to operate and have cool plugins and all of that. It's not about plugins. It's about your creative ability to translate director's vision into something that's going to be visible on the screen that is going to transform into like, you know, their story and it's going to embrace the emotion of that story. This is really, really, really important. And, and this is why we created this. And I think this is one of those basically, you know, most important um, things that you can that you can do. Um, also, another, you know, um, interesting information for you is this. This is going to be the first time we're going to open a development we've been working on for almost like, you know, two and a half, three years, which is the first uh, AI powered uh, color grading application. Basically, Color Lab Studio is, is the new, uh, completely new application we developed that is using AI and you're going to absolutely love it. You'll see how much time this is going to save you and you're going to be the first colorists on planet Earth who will be able to color grade using AI. And in the program, um, you know, Summer Look Academy, we dedicated the whole module to AI. So every week you're going to learn how you can deploy AI in different parts of post-production. Whether you're working on set and you need to quickly, you know, match and balance things, whether you're designing look and you need to kind of use AI to help you to get to the right look, whether you are color grading, you know, finals and you're like, a, you know, just opened an hour sequence and you want AI to assist you with that. So you're going to learn all these different processes to how AI can help you with that. And I think this is really, really exciting. This is the future. And I think we shouldn't, you know, stop ignoring that future. We love these tools, you know, like, a, you know, and everything. But, you know, we have to understand 
that you know the power that AI is giving us is beyond you know what we had and, and, and we're just at the beginning of it you'll see the application is just a really at early stages you know it does better you know color matching and grading than anything out there but we know that this is just the beginning the way how things are going to develop and evolve is just amazing just for your information only in the last six months we have managed to accelerate it for 20 times this is the speed of development of AI Basically, our models were 20 times slower at the beginning of this year. And now with Apple's update of Core ML, we managed to accelerate it 20 times. And, you know, with their announcement of new chips, you know, and, and it's just going to get even better and better because we take full advantage of Apple's architecture in order to accelerate it. Um, website is this color.training forward slash SLA. You have to apply and we select candidates. We just want this group to be like a, of people who have, you know, worked with us before, who are professional colorists and had at least five years of experience or somebody who's like, a, you know, completed the formal education. Maybe it's not a colorist, maybe doing something else, but still wants to learn about looks. You know, we're happy with it. Or we want, you know, to see your work, you know, want to see your showreel. And, you know, within 24 hours, we'll let you know if your application has been approved and then you can start enrolling. Um, it's just a little way for us to kind of create a very, very good and dynamic group that is going to be on a similar level um, because the assignments are not going to be easy. You know, you're going to have to do two assignments a week. And a very important thing, this is one question that everybody always asks me. Hey, you know, Dada, I'm not going to be around in August. I'm going on holidays, which is absolutely, you know, you know, true. We all do and stuff like this. So don't worry. You don't have to be live all the time. There is only two live classes a week. But if you don't make them, we record them and you can then watch everything later. All the other, um, you know, material you can watch at your own you know, time. You just basically log in and you press play and you watch it. But all live classes, if you can't attend, they will all be recorded and you're going to be able to rewatch them later. Um, uh, Sven, you cannot buy plugin now. So as I said, like, you know, there's going to be a website for that. But we at the moment are not selling it. We are only going to be testing it with a group that is going to be part of the Summer Look Academy. We are still not ready for the final release. Um, we do want to make this plugin, you know, incredibly good. And this process of testing is very, very, very important. Uh, so on that note, I just wanted to check if you guys have any other questions. Otherwise, um, I am actually, you know, so um, looking forward to seeing you actually on the Summer Look Academy. <laughs> Dennis is in the game. That's very good to hear, Dennis. Yes. Uh, Jan is asking, machine learning, could you explain in what way you are implementing it? I mean, would you have something like in flame for face mask, etc.? No, Jan, we are only using it for color grading. So what our system does, it basically looks at how you work and mimics the way you work and helps you do things that you don't want to do manually. So think about it as a color assist, you know, so you grade a frame and you tell machine learning, hey, listen, can you then go and, you know, grade the rest of the sequence for me, um, you know, just using, you know, exactly, you know, this as a preset that I have created. And, and, and that is really like, you know, what, what, what the plugin does. And it, what it does, it moves the controls for you. So it doesn't do any like a secret magic in the background and something just looks matched. No, it's actually using LiveGam again and it's matching it for you, just using those controls. So if you don't like it, you can tweak it. And you'll see it's very interesting. I, I don't want to go into too much detail to really what's happening because we are not going to announce this, you know, as a product until September. This is just a very early like a beta that we want to, you know, get out and start testing. So I won't be able to reveal everything here. There is an embargo on any information, you know, about this product until beginning of September. Uh, Will SLA be available later when we buy the designer? No, it won't. David, it is basically a course that we're doing now. It is just a, like a not going to be available again. It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of, you know, group effort, you know. 
And uh, uh, Keith, you, we actually have tested it on an older version of, you know, DaVinci. So it does work, you know. We actually have gone as, uh, at, and back into high Sierra. This is the, you know, the minimum you need to have. And, you know, you don't have to have 16, but, you know, it's better because, you know, there are certain improvements on 16. Um, Jan is asking, okay, I see, can't wait to see it under my hands. Very good, Jan. <laughs> I'm glad you're, you're excited about it. Um, so, yes, Tom, to export the look from, um, from the, from um, a color lab studio, oh, sorry, so from look designer, you just click on this. So look, I'm just going to click on this and it's going to even name the lot for me. It's going to tell me, oh, look, I'm using this, 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 this and this. And bang, drop down. We have it. And that you save and your look is then ready. So you can actually, you know, start selling it for hundreds and hundreds of dollars because you have a subtractive color science lot. And some people in the past, funny enough, did pay for that, that much amount of money. Um, but now you can go guys and make your own subtractive color science lots. You don't really need, you know, um, to, you know, download just a lot. You basically can design your own and you know just you know one more time let me just show you the beauty of that you know check it out check it out i actually really like it especially on a dark skin you know because you can there you can see you know that beautiful skin tone even more you know and and and, and i have to say that you know you know, when we had a colorist meet up with Ian Bertovitz, that he kind of explained, you know, that, that, you know, necessity, you know, how to kind of, you know, get dark skin to look beautiful. And, and I think, you know, that CMY, because of that lower saturation, really, really, you know, becomes more visible, you know, or you understand more, you know, with a dark skin. So it's, it's really, really, really amazing. Uh, yes, Tom, go ahead and download the uh 16.2.5 you know anything above 16.2.2 i believe is going to work for us because we do have some features that we are using uh, there um that have been uh, up uh you know released only like a, with the upgrade of 16.2 sven's asking how complicated would it be to recreate a subtracted color mat just with resolves on tools. Well, Sven, actually I can do it. This is how I designed it. I showed it, uh, uh, you know, maybe a year ago now, almost not less than that. Um, and um, it's possible, but it's very complicated. So, um, you know, the, the, the trick is to know the color science and the math for that. So basically uh, I can see that my connection is getting a little bit low, which is maybe a good sign for us to um, thank you all for you know, being a part of this wonderful uh, live stream. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> and uh, I have one more question from William. Can I export look designer as an ACES? Absolutely, William. This is exactly why we also made a 65 point so that your ACES LMTs are looking just much, much, much better. Um, Yes, you can change your color lab ACES to the look designer. We're definitely going to like, uh, you know, all licenses, you know, that you guys have are just going to be able to translate to this. Simon, thank you so much, guys. Check out Simon's Instagram, my favorite Instagram. It's called Orange and Teal. Uh, Adrian, thank you as well for tuning in. Naveen, <laughs> what did you say? Can you add the control in color to switch between the color profiles it would be really convenient maybe you can explain to me later Naveen exactly what you want thank you Sergey very good thank you for being here Arthur you no know, thank you I'm glad you like it Pablo and Adam very good guys uh, you know thank you for tuning in I mean like you know we were actually a really really good group today um, and you know anyway uh, you know as long as you tune in we're gonna keep doing it you know because this is the real inspiration for us um, and and I hope you know you're gonna find you know this really useful you know these are like a little tools that you know not every you know person who downloaded Da Vinci has and this is definitely going to separate you and made you like a you know a little bit special a little bit better and which is always something we try to do we always try to get better at our job 
Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I really hope to see you um, at uh, Samaluk Academy. Um, the you know, registrations are going to stay open until Sunday. So uh, if you have any questions, please hit us and hope to see you all there. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.